So my name is Kate Beck. I'm the project manager from the city for the Master Thoroughfare Plan update. So real briefly in terms of what we want to cover today, I want to give you a brief overview of where we are with the presentation of a draft Master Thoroughfare Plan update. So the Master Thoroughfare Plan is the city's long range planning tool about the major arteries of the city's transportation network. Uh, where they should go and in general um, what the cross section should look like. We've been working on this project since about January. It's really different than updates that we've done in the past. We typically update this plan every five to six years. The last time was 2009. But this is a much more expansive update than we've done before. So we have a lot of different components that are going into the final recommendations. This presentation is meant to give an orientation to those different components and how they fit together. But the real crux of today's meeting is to get your feedback on the resulting recommendations on the links that you're interested in on the transportation network. Um, then I want to talk briefly about the, the schedule for the rest of the project and the next steps that you can expect between now and adoption. And then finally, as I said, um, we would invite all of you to come up and talk to us about the specific links that you're interested in and make sure that the staff recommendation reflects all of all of the input that we need. If there are considerations um, that you think that we haven't taken into account, other information that we need to know, anything that we've missed, uh, please let us know now and we want to incorporate that into the final plan uh, that's going to go forward after the, after the first of the year. So just real quickly about how we got here. I mentioned that the project kicked off in January um, in earnest. This is our third and final round of public meetings. So the first round was in the spring and at that time we were trying to introduce the project um, sort of all together and talk about how it's different than other updates that we've done. Um, wanted to talk about the advisory groups that the council appointed to lead our efforts and then get feedback on the general approach and methodology that we're using. We came back at the end of the summer then to talk about um, preliminarily how things were looking based on that methodology that we had adopted. So the different components and how our model was coming together, that sort of thing. So we got feedback at that time. And then this round, as I said, is where all of those components are in a draft form. We have specific recommendations related to individual links and we wanna make sure that we didn't miss anything and that we have all the information that we need to make a solid recommendation. At the same time, we've been working with a number of, at the same time that we have been having these public meetings, we've been working with a bunch of other stakeholders. We've worked with the counties and with neighboring communities to make sure that our long range plans meet up with theirs. Um, I mentioned that we have a couple of advisory groups, the task forces council appointed, there's a resource panel that's about 50 members strong of, um, of interest across the city, school districts, the counties, the business chambers, that sort of thing. Um, we've been meeting regularly with TxDOT and the T. Actually, the T has a representative here today, and we have a board about their um, master transportation plan as well, uh, et cetera. So uh, one of the things that we've, that we've been working on, I mentioned that this is a more comprehensive update, and we wanted to expand the way we think about our transportation network. Previously, it's really been focused only on individual automobiles and vehicular transportation. And so... And, and also, we have had three roadway types for major roadways, and the cross-section of those has been the same regardless of where they are in the community. And so with this, the vision for this update is that we recognize that uh, we wanna support other modes of travel, we wanna support transit, we wanna make sure that pedestrians feel safe, we wanna make sure that people can get around on bicycles where it's appropriate. We also want to make sure that the roadways reflect and support the adjacent land use. So you don't wanna end up with a very high volume, high speed, wide roadway immediately adjacent to residential development. And so we're starting with the land use and then making sure that the roadway type that we designate supports it and matches it. Um, and so out of that, we've come up with some goals that we will use to um, help prioritize the funding for the projects that come through and to make sure that the roadways in this plan um, help us reach the vision for that, that master transportation plan. So you can see here, I won't read this to you, but you can see that what we're trying to do is balance the needs of mobility, not just vehicular mobility, against uh, economic opportunity and other opportunities for the way that the roadway network can support adjacent land uses, um, and, and all with an eye toward uh, fiscal stewardship as well. Also previously, we had roadways that were basically just set on spacings, a mile spacing between major roadways, We've done some um, travel demand forecasting and found that in a lot of cases, some of those major roadways weren't necessary based on what we expect our um, volumes are gonna be far into the future. And so there's a lot of expense and uh, consequences to having really large roads if, if you can't justify them. 
So this is my final slide. The two primary components of this plan are the roadway alignments, so where all the lines on the map go, and then the right-of-way, which is the public space from, um, from the back side of the, of the sidewalk or the building face, the property line, to the other side. So it's the roadway in between, it's the sidewalk, um, it's the parkway area. And, and so this MTP talks about the way the road looks in between. So there are two teams on our consultant, uh, in our consultant group. One is the alignment team, the other is the right-of-way and cross-section street type team. They work together, not, yeah, they're not in opposition. And so Rob Frazier with HDR is gonna come up first and talk about the alignment work that he's done. Okay, we have collected over the last 10, 10 months, 11 months, uh, nearly 200 issues, 200 comments about the, uh, the alignments and other facets of the Master Thoroughfare Plan. And those are on the map here. And so we have uh, looked at each of these and they are sorted at the top. About half of them were alignment and kind of map cleanup issues related to the lines on the map that Kate was mentioning. And then some of the other ones actually shifted over and were more um, about street type and other issues. So we've got a lot of issues. To address that, we have a computerized um, model that looks at uh, all of the um, floodplains, all of the wetlands, all of the um, different uh, topography that uh, we need to take into account. So where there are steep slopes, where there are gas wells. So we have a geographic information system model so that, that looks at all of those things and allows us to, to make informed decisions. We also got input from a lot of uh, landowners, stakeholders, from our public meetings, from a lot of different people that has helped us to work through uh, all of the issues for those 200 locations. And uh, this map here says, shows you that we, we actually uh, divided the entire city into about seven different regions, subregions, and those are on the different boards around the room. And so we'll be happy to talk about all the details. We kind of took this down to, to details for this meeting. And um, that, uh, that is just kind of, when you look at the map to your left or to your right there, uh, that gives you an orientation, the orientation map. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and quickly through those seven areas. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna focus on more of the ones in the east and the south, um, but we'll touch on all of them. This is the uh, in far north. And let me just say that the, uh, the red lines are uh, major thoroughfare plan uh, remove, uh, lines are being removed. So we're taking something off of the MTP. It doesn't mean that we're eliminating the road. If the road is there, it's gonna stay there. And if the road is not there, the road could still be built. It might be built as a collector. It, wouldn't, it just isn't needed. Um, and Kate talked about we don't wanna build roads that, that aren't needed or make them too wide. So we're trying to be careful about that. So some roads are being taken off of the uh, master thoroughfare plan, and then others are um, being added. So the uh, new alignment, the blue lines, are roads that we're adding to the MTP. And uh, some of those are long existing roads and some of them are brand new. Some of them are just being moved. So I just wanna make sure that that's, that's clear. The black lines are lines that are not uh, moving at all. And some of you were, were looking at those before. They're not, uh, not moved from before. So uh, area two is, the, uh, is kind of moving further south and you can see there's a variety of places where we have uh, made changes. And then move out to the west and a number of changes out in the west as well. And uh, then downtown, and downtown a lot of the lines are black because we're not there's not a lot of room for new MTP roads. So we're, there's not a lot of changes, but there are a few changes uh, where there are developments that are currently underway and, and things of that nature. And then there are a few roads uh, that aren't needed, such as uh, Evans and Bittison. There's certain roads that we just, they're not functioning as uh, MTP roadways. And, and they won't, aren't expected to in the future. When we move to the east, uh, there are a couple of uh, locations that are of, of interest. Randall Mill Precinct Line, some adjustments are proposed to those two roadways. Uh, Greenbelt Road is proposed to be added because there are very few north-south connections. And, um, and so there are some changes. And again, I encourage you to, if you haven't already, go look at the boards and we can talk with you about the details of those changes. Uh, let's move to the south. This is the southwest. There are a few, uh, few changes in the southwest, and I'm gonna wrap up in the southeast. Uh, we have coordinated with all of the different municipalities. So we've coordinated with Burleson, Mansfield, to make sure that the MTP um, roads that we are putting forth 
match what, what they're putting forth, everything is coordinated. So you'll see some uh, different connection, uh, connections with each of those communities. And so that's our, our coordination with them. So there's a lot more detail that we could go into. I just want to give you a high level overview and uh, turn it over to Christopher to talk about the second half. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I'm Christopher Kinzel, also with HDR. I'm part of the, the B team. Or, um, so uh, I didn't realize we, we were sort of, you know, head to head. So and that, you got to score us at the end, I guess. Um, so Rob basically talked about the boards that are in the back half. A lot of you are very interested in those boards because they, they show lines as to where these roads are going to go. Uh, my boards are the more colory ones here that, that talk a little bit about um, in the general category of right way how wide would the roads be and, and how do we determine that? And so that, that's what all these boards were about. Um, so we've, we've been to you a couple times uh, in different public meetings and so early on in the process we define, it, we define these five types of street and Kate was talking about important, it's important that a, where a street is uh, helps define what kind of street it is, the context, complete streets. And so there's a lot more definition here of what these different types are. You can ask, ask me or anyone about them uh, as, you, uh, as you look at them. But we have these five different types that go in, into the, that are appropriate in different areas. Like a, a neighborhood connector is typically near a residential area, not necessarily a, usually a street running through uh, with houses on or anything, but one that's in the area serving it, connecting a neighborhood to services and things like that. Um, and so you can see more of that on, on those boards. Then the second part of, of figuring out how wide the road would be is, is to look at all these different elements. And Kate talked about, uh, you know, bikes, pedestrians, transit. Um, we, we had to look at a lot of different new things. The, the, the current MTP document has some very, you know, it has lanes and a median and, and doesn't usually pay much attention to how wide is the sidewalk or, um, or, or in terms of where you are, uh, what kind of sidewalk do you need, do you need bike lanes, those kinds of things. So, so we have to look at all these different pieces, the, obviously the car lanes, but also what kind of median you might need, whether that's a two-way left turn lane, as a lot of you have heard us talking about on, on Randall Mill as a potential, um, or a median, uh, uh, you know, a raised median. Looking at sidewalks, and in some places you need certain minimums. Uh, transit, transit lanes, Kate mentioned there's a, there's a board back there that's the T's plan, and we're kind of coordinating with them on uh, how this will all come together. Uh, in some areas you need parking, and so what are the widths there? Bike lanes and, and shared paths where bikes and peds can both use. So all these little dimensions here are pieces of the puzzle that, that determine how wide a road needs to be. Um, and so, uh, so we, we pull all those elements together and look at what are the right, what are the right widths for each of those em elements. And then we put them together on these different streets. And so uh, if you were here last time, we had all these colorful pictures of uh, what we call typical sections of what a street could look like, what, what elements it has. And those ranged in width. So the, th these are the right-of-way widths that, that Kate was talking about. It includes the street, but also the sidewalk and what we call the parkway, the, the, the uh, the piece that, that includes the sidewalk, but also landscaping, those kinds of things. It's all the public right of way. So these, all these streets vary and, and have different widths uh, depending on a bunch of criteria that I'll talk about in just a second. Um, we also did this for roads that aren't on the MTP. So collectors and local streets, we determined uh, the MTP does show for, for like the street in front of your house, how wide should that be when a developer builds a new residential street? And so uh, we have those, we don't map them because they don't rise to the level of, of we need to map all the different types, um, but we, we set some width criteria for them. Um, and then again, so then, so then the piece, after we did all that, we came to the public meeting last time, we, we did this map of where these five street types, these five different colors you see here, where they make sense on the, on the city's roadways. And so, uh, that's what all these colors here are the, are the correspond to these colors here and you can see uh, where where we um, where we think those were are appropriate and what we've put underneath it uh, we have the colored lines but underneath those lines we have the city's land use plan so it shows even in areas that aren't developed yet it shows where future residential is planned to be where industrial commercial all those kinds of things and it kind of gives you a hint as to why we 
selected the type of road we did because we're trying to match it to the context. That's the new thing that we're doing in this MTP. Um, uh, the next thing was to determine lane, lanes, and a lot of you have been to this board tonight. We're looking at uh, uh, roads with one lane in each direction, two lanes in each direction, or three lanes in each direction. Those are the three colors on this map, red, purple, and blue. And um, we used a traffic model uh, that was based on, based on this land use plan here, uh, the city, how, how it's going to build out in the future. What would the, what would the traffic forecast be and how much, how much traffic will all this growth generate? And so that helped us in determining what makes sense uh, for, for lanes. So this is, this is a distinction between the, the old MTP had these three classes Kate was talking about. And each one, the one type always had two lanes and no median. One type always had two lanes in each direction and a median. The other type had six lanes or uh, three lanes in each direction. Now we're allowing each of the, each type can have a different amount of, of lanes. So that, that way we can, we don't oversize or undersize roads. We're right sizing the roads. Um, we've also created this concept of the established thoroughfare. As we were looking at how many lanes we realized, that, of course, that there's a lot of, as Kate mentioned, there's a lot of streets that are already built uh, in town, and they're already constrained by existing buildings and developments. They're not going to be widened in the future, necessarily. They, there's just nowhere for them to go because they're, there's, they're surrounded by existing buildings or, or other land use. And so uh, we're not showing how many lanes they might be in the future because they're probably going to stay the same. But we do still assign them a street type because if there's a street improvement project in the future, like a downtown uh, you know, streetscape project or a new development ends up redoing a street, we want to make sure that these complete street ideas uh, get incorporated. So there might be an opportunity to improve the sidewalk, to add a bike lane, to, to add turn lanes, do these different things. And we have a bunch of guidance on how that works in our document. Uh, and then finally, we, we have this process, and I've shown this at previous meetings too, but it, it puts all these things together to arrive at that width. You know, I, I showed you the slide where this one type of road could be 80 feet or it could be as wide as 130 feet. Well, how do you decide? Well, we have this well-defined process that goes, that looks at that map of street types, it looks at that lanes map, it looks at the T's plan that's back there, it looks at... Uh, uh, it, it looks at what median type might be needed based on projected traffic. It looks on at whether parking is needed. Um, and it looks at, uh, you know, what type of bike facility makes the most sense. And all that is in a, is a very rule-based system, so we actually can actually automate it. And that spits out this map over here that's right, future right-of-way needs. And, and uh, basically, at the end of this process, you end up with how wide should the road be so the city knows how to plan and reserve the right-of-way in the future. So as developers come in, um, they make sure that the land is reserved in the right place. Um, so I'll, that is that describes the colory boards. I can, uh, I'll be standing around them after this if you have more questions, and I'll turn it back over to Kate. So just real, pr real briefly to, to wrap it up, I wanted to talk about um, next steps in terms of project adoption. So. I mentioned this is our final round of public meetings. We also have an open house that we're having at City Hall during business hours on Friday. Um, and then online, we're going to have these maps available. And we also have a policy document that's about 15 pages long. And it talks about how all these maps fit together, the application of this plan, the process for amendments, exceptions, that sort of thing. So that'll be available, I hope, by the end of this week, if not the very first of next week, for review. So. After all of this information is out and we've finished this round of public meetings and, the, and we have a survey tonight and we'll have a survey online, we want to take that feedback um, and incorporate it into a final staff recommendation. That's what the final draft will be. So um, as I said, tonight we want to make sure there's not anything we missed or that we got wrong. Uh, we, we want to hear if there's any consideration that, that we need to think about incorporating into that final recommendation. Uh, we'll go back to our two advisory groups in January. Um, in two different meetings, so mid-January and then either late January or early February. The task force will then make a recommendation to the City Plan Commission. We expect that we'll get it to them in March, and so there will be a public hearing at the City Plan Commission. They, in turn, will make a recommendation to the City Council. Um, that'll also obviously be a public hearing, and we expect at this point that that'll be in about April.